Hello guys, today we'll be looking at the fifth program of the DBMS laboratory which is about the company database. So considering the schema for this database, we have the employee table, department table, the location table, project table, works on table, where in the employee table we have the SSN as the primary key, department table we have the D number as the primary key, Delocation table, we have the D number as well as the delocation as the primary key since we do not have a unique key in the delocation. Uh, then we have project table where we have P number as the primary key. Then you have works on table where you have the SSN as well as the P number as the primary key. Now coming to the create table, you have create table. Firstly, uh, since we have the manager SSN, which will be there, uh, which has been referenced in the uh, super SSN of the employee table. So firstly, what do we do is we create the table for department. So how do you do it? Create table department. There D number, which is an integer, that is a primary key. Then you have D name, that is var character. Here you won't be specifying the manager SSN. Uh, instead, you'll be altering the department table later after you've specified the employee table. So here you won't be specifying the manager session. Instead, manager start date that is having the data type date. After that, we have to create the employee table where SSN is var character that is the primary key. Then you have the first name that is var character. Then you have the last name var character again, address var character again. Then you have the sex that is character only one. Then you have salary uh, that is of integer data type. Then you have super SSN which references the employee table of the attribute SSN itself. So this super SSN will be one of those among the SSN which is present in the employee table itself. So it references the employee table. The attribute with which it um, references in that employee table is the SSN. So that is why we've written like that. Then you have the D number. Uh, so that D number references the department table. And uh, in that particular department table, it references the D number attribute. That is why we've written like this. Next, we create the delocation table. So in delocation table, again, you have D number, which references the department table and their D number attribute. So that is why I've written like that. Then you have delocation, that is var character. Uh, then the primary key, there are two primary key, that is why primary key of D number, comma delocation. Then we create the project table, create table project where P number integer is the primary key. Then you have P name that is var character. Then you have P location that is of the data type var character again. Then you have D number that references the department table of the attribute D number. Then you have the works on table. In works on table, it SSN references the employee table of the attribute SSN. Then you have P number that references the project table of the attribute P number. Then you have R integer then you have two primary keys that is why primary key of is in comma p number so that is about creating the table since you're not added the manager session firstly while creating the department table you'll be altering the department table for that you have alter table name then you add the particular column so here it is alter table table name here is department you'll be adding a column that is manager session where it refer references employee table of assistant since manager assistant is nothing but the one of the values of the assistant in the employee table will be referencing the employee table and the attribute assistant in that particular employee table so that is about creating the tables now coming to insertion firstly you'll be inserting into employee table so it will be in since we are not since we will not be inserting the values for the manager assistant as well as the t number so that is why you'll be inserting insert into employee you'll be specifying all the attributes except those two attributes and values and you'll be inserting those values this is done because we need to update the employee table later after we have created the department table so once after we create the department table, we'll get the D number and uh, manager assistant. So after that, you can update the employee table. So we'll be inserting values to only these attributes except those that is the D number as well as the manager assistant. So once after this, you'll be inserting the values for department 
uh, after inserting values for department, you'll be updating the employee table for the super SSN and the D number. So update employee set super SSN equals to so and so, D number equals to so and so, where you will specify the condition SSN equals to this. So you will be inserting the super SSN as well as D number for all the SSN values that are present in the employee table. So after that you will be inserting for D location, project table, then works on table. Now coming to the queries. Make a list of all project numbers for projects that involve the employee whose last name is Scott either as a worker or as a manager of the department that controls the project. So make sure while inserting the values you have to have a worker or a manager that has the last name as Scott so that you can have some result in the after you have specified the query. So firstly select distinct keyword is used in order to have the distinct P numbers. Uh, there won't be any duplication of the P numbers. So you use the distinct keyword. So select distinct P dot P number. Here uh, the project table has been given the alias name P. That is why P dot P number. So the tables used are from project P, department D and employee E. And it will be joining all of these tables so where uh, the common attribute between employee table and department table is D number. So E dot D number equals to D dot D number and D dot D number is equal to. So the common attribute between the project and the department table is D number. Uh, so it is D dot D number is equal to P dot D number. Again, you have a common attribute between the department table and the employee table that is um, D dot manager SSN is equal to E dot SSN and you will specify the condition that is e dot last name that is employee's last name is equal to scott as specified in the question after that uh, or that is here it is union either they have told scott last name should be present in the worker or the manager so that is why we will take uh, the next table here this is for the manager if he is a manager if he is a worker this is the query that is select so you will use a union operator and specify both of the queries so select distinct p1 dot p number here project table has the alias name p1 uh, then uh, the tables used here is project p1 works on w employee e1 and you will join all of these tables so the common attribute between the works on and p that is project table is um, p number that is why p1 dot p number is equal to w dot p number and the common attribute between the employee and the works on table is the ssn so e1 dot ssn is equal to w dot ssn and you specify the condition that n uh, e1 dot last name is equal to scott so that will retrieve the project number where uh, scott has been working that is the last name Next, you have show the resulting salaries if every employee working on the project IoT project is given a 10% raise. So make sure you have a in project table, you have the project name to be as IoT. Uh, so you need to create a view here. So create view, view name here is increment salary, that is INCR underscore sal as select what you will be selecting. You'll select the first name, last name, that is E dot first name, E dot last name and one point one star e dot salary from employee e project p works on w so these are the three tables we'll be using and we'll join all of the three tables by using the common attribute that is the common attribute between the ss that is uh, employee and uh, works on table as SSN. So E dot SSN is equal to W dot SSN. And the common attribute between the project and the works on table is P number. So P dot P number is equal to W dot P number. And you specify the condition that P dot uh, P name is equal to IOT. And you will display the view using select star from INCR cell. So that will give you a view by raising the salary of each of the employee that are working in the project IOT. So next query, find the sum of salaries of all employees of the accounts department as well as the maximum salary, minimum salary and the average salary in this department. So select, they ask the sum. So sum of salary. These are 
uh, built-in functions then you have minimum of the salary that is min of salary and then maximum of salary that is max of salary then you have average of salary that is avg average of salary from which table you will be using the department d table and employee e table uh, so you will join both of this since salary attribute is in uh, employee table and uh, the department accounts is in department table will be using both of these tables then you will join both the tables using the common attribute that is d number so d dot d number is equal to e dot d number and you specify the condition that it should be accounts from the department accounts so uh, d name is equal to accounts so that is about the third query next query that is the fourth query retrieve the name of each employee who works on all objects can on all projects uh, controlled by department number 5 use not exist operator so you'll be selecting the uh, first name and the last name that is why you select e dot f name e dot last name from the employee table uh, where you've given the alias name as e where not exist operator will be using you'll be using two queries that is you need to be selecting only the department number 5 so select p number uh, from project p where d number equals to 5 okay that is the first select query minus select p number from works on table and you'll be joining the employee in the works on table using the ssn as the common attribute so you'll be minusing all the other projects that are handled uh, you'll be only retrieving the projects that are controlled by department number 5 that are, that is why you'll be minusing all the other Uh, projects that are not controlled by department number five. So that is about the fourth query. Coming to the fifth query, for each department that has more than five employees, retrieve the department number and the number of its employee who are making more than six lakh. So here you'll be retrieving the department number. So select D dot D number because department you are giving the alias name as D and count of star. Here you'll be counting the number of employees. That is why count of star. And you'll be using two tables that is employee E and department D. So after which you need to join these two uh, table by using the common attribute D number. So that is why where E dot D number equals to D dot D number. And another condition is that salary should be more than six lakh. So E dot salary is greater than six lakh. And a uh, d number in so we'll be having an another inner query in order to check if the now uh, employees are more than 5 for that you'll be selecting e1 dot d number from the employee even table group by e1 dot d number so you'll be selecting the d number from the table employee but here you've given the alias name for the employee table as even so that is why e1 dot d number and the employee even is the alias name and you'll be grouping by this thing only that is e1 dot d number having count star greater than 5 since we need employees in each department that are great like uh, more than 5 employees so count star is greater than 5 and will be grouped by d dot d number so the result will be uh, the uh, d numbers which have more than 5 uh, employees and the salary should be uh, more than 6 lakh also so that is about the fifth query um the link uh, to the notes for this uh, particular lab program is provided in the description box thank you guys